so today uh, some small part from the electrocardiograph topic it was remaining that i will complete and then after that we'll go to the next topic and that is the that is electric heart sounds okay so last time we have discussed about the electrical activity of the heart how the ecg waveform is generated and how it is related with our pumping action of the heart we have seen the electrical activity it originates from sa node then it proceeds towards the av node then bundle of his and purkinje fibers these things we have discussed in the previous lecture uh, we have also seen the ecg wave so these are the various uh, parts of ecg wave p q r s t so this qr qrs it is the peak of this wave r is the peak of this wave and this is called as qrs complex okay so we have seen the significance of all this p wave what do you mean by qrs complex it corresponds to ventricular depolarization then t wave and so on and in very rare case uh, one small wave is available after t wave that is called as a u wave but it is not normally uh, visible in very few cases it can be seen so that is what we have discussed then uh, we have seen the heart it acts as the uh, electrical dipole because the electrical activity it originates in the sa node and that it propagates in the form of action potential so we have seen this vector diagram and we also discussed the lead system what is the uh, limb three three lead limb three limb lead system the right arm left arm and the left leg and so on so based on this uh, this is the vector which corresponds to the dipole of the vector what you see at the center of the triangle and the projections of this vector along the axis of lead one that gives you the potential available between right arm and the uh, left arm then the projection of this on the lead two axis it gives you the pot the electric potential available between left leg and right arm and similarly on projection on the lead three axis that gives you the uh, measurement between the electrodes of connected to left arm and the left leg so this is a three lead system uh, this also we have discussed so there are three systems uh, uh, right so what just now i uh, revised that is a standard limb leads so it consists of three leads and uh, as we have seen there is one triangle there and this triangle it is called as enthoven triangle okay so like this there are three augmented leads and six pre pre cordial leads and all these things were discussed in the previous lecture and in total this forms the total 12 leads okay so this is all about the leads this is already discussed in the previous lecture the augmented leads this is the augmented list avr avl and avf okay now uh, today i am going to introduce you about ecg machine okay yeah artifacts now uh, these are some sample measurements for the ecg wave which is uh, as you see here uh, 1 2 3 uh, this is 1 2 3 so this is the re reading of the lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 what we have seen in the along the triangle okay then there are total 12 leads just now what we have discussed so all those 12 leads you can see here avr avl avf then these are the pre cord six pre cordial leads leads v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 so when you take any Uh, ecg graph from any professional uh, doctor so this this is the standard 
ecg wave form which is available so 12 it gives us the output of the 12 leads okay so actually the nature of the wave form it depends upon where it is measured okay so that's why this uh, 12 standard lead leads are there and accordingly the doctors they study it and provide the diagnosis based on this okay now uh, this this is the electrical signal and the amplitude of this signal says we have seen it is very less uh, few millivolts and that's why it is susceptible to the noise generated from uh, other sources okay so that is called as artifacts so we'll see later in details what are the different sources of artifacts or this is also called as a noise also <coughs> okay so the ecg tracing is affected by patient motion because you are measuring this ecg wave form by collecting some electrodes on the body of the patient and obviously there will be some motion uh, by the patient and because of that because of that some artifacts or noise is produced okay and it may give the illusion of cardiac arrhythmia so that means it may uh, because of noise if some different type of pulse is available then the doctor may predict it as some irregularity in the beating of the heart so that is it may give the illusion of cardiac arrhythmia okay so artifacts are distorted signals caused by secondary internal or external sources okay now when we say internal sources that means it is sources within the body itself so you can say sir how noise is produced within the body itself right now when you are connecting the electrodes for the measurement of ecg signal that means we are interested by the electrical signals which are generated by our heart right but in the uh, starting of this subject we have seen apart from heart there are many more systems in the body they are generating electrical signals so those signals they will interfere between the signal produced by the heart that is the ecg okay and particularly this this is more significant in terms of muscle movement okay so because uh, during ecg measurement if there is a motion of the patient then our muscles also generate some electrical signal that we have seen and that will interfere uh, in the original ecg wave form okay actually this cannot be avoided totally because irrespective of water uh, efforts we take there will be certain moment of the patient okay so that's why we use some algorithms to reduce this noise because of the muscle movement okay so this is the internal source actually and the external source it may be some interference from the electrical device uh, which is working nearby the patient okay so details about this artifacts or the noise we are going to study in separately in uh, uh, next lecture okay uh, so th this distortion poses a significant challenge to healthcare providers who employ various techniques and strategies to safely recognize this false signals okay uh, accurately separating the ecg artifact from the true ecg signal because we are interested in true ecg signal and this ecg artifact that means the noise produced it should be removed and it can have a significant impact on the patient outcomes and legal liabilities okay so improper lead placement has estimated to occur around 0.4% to 4% of ecg recordings and has resulted in improper diagnosis and treatment including unnecessarily use of thromboelectric therapy okay so unnecessarily based on this electrical signals the doctor will predict some 
treatment and that should be avoided okay so that is about the electrical activity of the heart ecg we have discussed we have discussed various types of electrodes okay then the artifacts in short we have discussed but related to artifacts we are going to study it in more detail uh, uh, one more separate lecture for artifacts uh, next time okay so now from this topic uh, last point we are going to, about ecg what we are going to discuss it is the ecg machine okay so till now what we have discussed it is the electrodes okay so we have seen the how the electrodes are placed here as you can see here these are the limb leads right arm left arm le right leg and so on right now these connections are made to uh, connected to the machine so this block diagram shows how actually the uh, how the any ecg machine works typical ecg machine works there nowadays there are many more advanced versions of this ecg machine but this uh, diagram shows the very basic type of ecg machine okay so it starts with this electrodes which are connected to this machine as you can see here right arm left arm right uh, left uh, it depends uh, as we have seen there is a 12 lead electrical uh, tw 12 e uh, total electrodes can be connected on the body just now we have discussed this now the outputs of this electrodes are connected to certain registers uh, and there is a selector switch here okay as you see here a lead selector okay now uh, in the typical graph of the ecg we have seen there are total 12 uh, plots ecg plots available okay so there is a knob here so using this knob we can select the electrodes currently which is be being plotted for example you can see here avf auxiliary augmented lead avr avl avf and so on okay so there is a lead selector switch because at a time this plotter it will plot only one plot one ecg plot and total 12 electrodes means total 12 plots should be available okay so this is the selective switch here there is a standard 1 millivolt which is applied across this resistive divider network okay there is a pre amplifier next stage is the pre amplifier and this is the gain adjustment of the pre amplifier then there is a output of the pre amplifier it is given to the pen amplifier because the output of the pen amplifier it is given to the plotter so that's why it is called as pen amplifier and this is the mecha mechanical plotter actually what you see here this is some uh, uh, galvanometer type of arrangement there is a permanent magnet there is a coil here right and there is a pen and the mo motion of this pen it will be controlled by the electrical signal which is available at the output of pen amplifier there is a marker here to indicate now this functionality of this marker is to indicate what type of lead it is getting plotted okay and this electrode uh, this uh, point what you see here needle it will keep it will move as per the electrical signal and accordingly this plot will be available okay uh, now there is a power supply here there is a there, there is this resistance here and the stylus heat so this stylus that means the plotter the stylus of the plotter it works on the basis of heating principle okay so the current will flow through that stylus and based on that current the electrical uh, based on that current heat will be generated and because of that heat generated there will be the, the, this plot graph will be generated actually so that is the principle okay so there is no ink here special type of graph paper is there and on that graph paper 
दिस हिटेड नीड असते जर हिटेड स्टाइलस इट विल मूव ॲज ॲज पर द सिग्नल अँड दॅट इज हाऊ इट वर्स देर इज अ मोटर हिअर राईट देर इज अ पेपर स्पीड यू कॅन ॲडजस्ट द स्पीड ऑफ द पेपर पोलॅरिटी टेस्ट देन हिअर देर इज अ पॉवर स्विच इट हॅज थ्री पोझिशन्स ऑफ ऑन अँड रन ऑफ ऑन अँड रन सो दिस इज बिकॉज वेन इट इज ऑफ दॅट मीन्स एव्हरीथिंग फ्रॉम दिस प्लॉटर इट इज ऑफ ओके नाव वेन द पोझिशन ऑफ दिस पॉवर स्विच इट इज ऑन दॅट मीन्स ऑल अदर सर्किट्स एक्सेप्ट दिस टायलस दे आर वर्किंग नाव वेन रन दॅट मीन्स ॲक्च्युअल प्लॉटिंग विल स्टार्ट वेन इट इज इन रन पोझिशन ओके सो दिस इज इन शॉर्ट अबाउट दिस ई सी जी मशीन then uh, these are some additional features which are included in this machine that is over voltage project over voltage protection and the summing network so the output of this electrodes these are connected to some electrical circuit there is a driver amplifier buffer amplifier here now this bu- purpose of this buffer amplifier is to avoid loading on this electrodes because of because of the remaining circuitry of the machine so that's why this buffer amplifier is provided here then you can see the lead switch what is lead switch and pre amplifier okay so this circuit this is actually one detail part of the machine block diagram what we have seen earlier the starting part that is lead selector switch pre amplifier and so on okay so there is a buffer amplifier here just now what we have discussed to avoid the loading okay so this completes our discussion about ecg electrocardiograph so what you see on the screen there is one video here uh, it's available on youtube uh, this video it is about the heart sounds now in the previous topic we have seen uh, the physiology of the heart how the heart works uh, there are four chambers in the heart uh, left atrium uh, uh, right atrium then ventricle ventricle left ventricle right ventricle and so on and there are four valves in the heart and with the help of these four valves and these four chambers the heart is continuously working okay uh, now when you go to doctor you might have seen the doctor he has a stethoscope and it is a very ancient technique just they uh, hear the heart sounds and based on heart sounds doctor predicts about the patient what treatment should to be given and so on okay now as a electronics engineer now uh, we are going to study what type of heart sounds are produced and okay so what are the okay there was some disturbances in the internet connection actually okay so uh, let us start so what i was discussing our next topic uh, next uh, next point in this unit it is about phonocardiography so phonocardiography it is actually study of heart sounds right Uh, this is a very ancient technique uh, you might have seen when you uh, visit any uh, doctor physician uh, they have a stethoscope connected to their ears and they put it on our body and they listen to a heart sounds and based on that they predict our diseases or what treatment to be given okay so we are going to study now in detail about what how these heart sounds are produced and what are the types of heart sounds and how they are related to the activity of the heart okay now before going to the powerpoint presentation uh, i will show you th- this video which is available on youtube so that the working of electrical activity of the heart and the how the sounds are produced heart sounds are produced 
how they are related to the working of the heart that you will see from this video and after that in the next lecture we will discuss in details about the phonocardiography that means it is the actually the technique of studying heart sounds okay so i am starting this video just listen that lub dub sound the first heart sound lub also known as s1 is caused by the closing of the av valves after the atria have pumped blood into the ventricles the second heart sound dub or s2 originates from the closing of the aortic and pulmonary valves right after the ventricles have ejected the blood the time interval between S1 and S2 is when the ventricles contract, called systole. The interval between S2 and the next S1 is when the ventricles relax and are filled with blood, called diastole. Diastole is longer than systole, hence the lubdum, lubdum, lubdum. Heart sounds are auscultated at four different sites on the chest wall, which correspond to the location of blood flow as it passes through the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral valves, respectively. This is how similar defects associated with different valves are differentiated. Heart murmurs or whooshing sounds produced by turbulent flow of blood. Murmurs are diagnosed based on the time they occur in the cardiac cycle their changes in intensity over time, and the auscultation site where they are best heard. Examples of conditions associated with common systolic murmurs include mitral valve regurgitation, when the mitral valve does not close properly and blood surges back to the left atrium during systole. The murmur starts at S1 when the AV valves close and maintains the same intensity for the entire duration of systole. This hollow systolic murmur is best heard at the mitral region, the apex, with radiation to the left axilla. On the other side of the heart, a tricuspid valve regurgitation has similar timing and shape, but is loudest in the tricuspid area, and the sound radiates up along the left sternal border. Aortic valve stenosis. When the aortic valve does not open properly and blood is forced through a narrow opening, the blood flow starts small, rises to a maximum in mid-systole at the peak of ventricular contraction, then attenuates toward the end of systole. This results in a crescendo-decrescendo, or a diamond-shaped murmur, which starts a short moment after S1. It is often preceded by an ejection click caused by the opening of the stenotic valve. Aortic stenosis murmur is loudest in the aortic area and the sound radiates to the carotid arteries in the neck following the direction of blood flow. Again, on the other side of the heart, a pulmonic stenosis has the same characteristics but is best heard in the pulmonic area and does not radiate to the neck. Other conditions that cause audible systolic murmurs include ventricular septal defect and mitral valve prolapse. An example of diastolic murmurs is aortic valve regurgitation. This is when the aortic valve does not close properly, resulting in blood flowing back to the left ventricle during diastole, the filling phase. As the blood flows in the reverse direction, the murmur is best heard not in the aortic area but rather along the left sternal border. It peaks at the beginning of diastole when the pressure difference is highest, then rapidly decreases as the equilibrium is reached. Other common diastolic murmurs are associated with pulmonic regurgitation, mitral stenosis, and tricuspid stenosis. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to suggest a topic you want us to cover by leaving a comment below. Okay, so what was discussed in this video, it was about how the various uh, different types of sounds are produced in our heart okay.
they have pumped blood. Now what you see here, the types of sounds S1 and S2. So these are the uh, types of sounds which are produced in the heart. Uh, there is S3 and S4 also, but S1 and S2, these are the sounds produced in the normal heart. Right. Uh, in some uh, persons, S3 and S3, S4 are produced. So, uh, details about those we will discuss uh, next time. And there is other type of sound called as the murmur. Okay. So, this murmurs again. So, we will discuss about the murmurs also next time. And this is how the heart, the uh, heart sounds are related to the pumping action of the heart. Okay, so details about this we'll discuss in the next lecture, in the PowerPoint presentation. One more video I will discuss you, uh, show you next time, and after that we'll go to the systematic PowerPoint presentation. And this is about heart sounds. Okay, so I think uh, today we'll stop here. Next time I will continue again with the same topic. Uh, so next time we will discuss about the phonocardiography. Okay. So phonocardiography it is the st study of heart sounds. Phono means sound, cardio means related to heart and graphy means plotting that waveforms. So that is for today, uh, let us stop. If you have any queries, I will answer, otherwise you can give your attendance in the chat box, type your attendance in the chat box, after that if you do not have any query then we can, you can leave the class.